Hi, and welcome back to Unlock Your Bible, the show where the Bible is taught in a plain and clear way for all to understand. I'm Ron Knight. I'm your Bible teacher, and I ask that you get your King James Bible, a, a pad of paper and a pen or a pencil, whichever one you want to do to take notes, but join us in our study in the book of Galatians. My friend, for the past 57 sessions, 57 half hours, we've been looking at the book of Galatians verse by verse, and it is a wonderful book that teaches the difference between religion and Christ. You know, my friend, being a Christian is more than just going to church or that your family, you grew up in a Christian home. Christianity is a relationship with a risen Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Christianity is not religion. Religion is something where you do some good works to try to appease a God. Religion is binding yourself back to God. The word religion means, re means again, legio means to bind, to bind yourself again to God. Well, the Bible says that Jesus Christ, who is God, he's the son of God, he died to bind himself back to you. And what he desires you to do is rest in him. And see, the cross of Christ is where Jesus Christ bound himself back to mankind. And every man, Jew or Gentile, can be saved today through, through faith in the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. If you believe Jesus Christ is the son of God, and that he died on the cross to pay for your sins, he was buried and rose again, he gives you eternal life if you trust him, okay? Now, that's the grace message. That's the Bible. That's a relationship. That's what being a Christian is. Now, the Apostle Paul, who is the apostle of the Christians, you know, Christianity started with the Apostle Paul. The, the books of Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and Acts, those people who trusted Jesus Christ as their Messiah, those kingdom saints, they were not Christians. The Bible says they were first called Christians under the Apostle Paul in Antioch. He was the first member of the body of Christ. To be a Christian today means that you're in the body of Christ. And to be in the body of Christ, you need to, be, you need to trust what Christ did at Calvary for you. And only Paul gives you that message. That's why we study the books of the Apostle Paul verse by verse, okay? Now, all the Bible is for you from Genesis through Revelation. It's for your learning. But all the Bible is not directly to you or about you. And my friend, if you don't get this principle in your, in your understanding as you study the scriptures, you'll never understand the Bible the way God would have you. You'll never have total comprehension. You'll always be confused. You know, Genesis through Acts are God's program with the nation of Israel in time past. The books uh, of the Apostle Paul, the 13 books of Romans through Philemon, that's God's present program. It's the books that God gave for our obedience. In the future, after the body of Christ is in heaven, God will continue with the nation of Israel in the books of Hebrews through Revelation. That's the future. And if you don't study the Bible that way, you'll be confused. But if you do, that's the key to understanding the Bible. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15, in your King James Bible says to rightly divide the word of truth. That's the key to understanding. Now, we're in the book of Galatians chapter 5 and verse 11, so let's take a look there. We left off in verse 11. Our Apostle Paul writes, And I, brethren, if I yet preach circumcision, why do I su yet suffer persecution? Then is the offense of the cross ceased. You know, my friend, we've seen over the, the, the time, and if you're new to this program, you'll know the Apostle Paul, he was strong about preaching the grace of, of God. And grace is all that God is free to do for you through the redemption that is in his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, grace says you don't have to do the work. Yeah, grace says you can't do the work. See, God is perfect and he requires perfect work. And so his perfect son lived on earth for 33 and a half perfect years and he died a sacrificial perfect death and took your second death not just your physical death but the death you de you deserve in hell and lake of fire Jesus Christ suffered that in his soul for you my friend and he was buried and he rose again for your justification Romans 4:25 so when we talk about what Paul preached he says it's not cir circumcision look at verse 11 and I brethren if I yet preach circumcision, Paul says, if I was out there preaching that you had to be circumcised to be saved. Now, my friend, circumcision was the big issue in Paul's day, 2000 years ago. The nation of Israel had just fallen and God and they were diminishing. Paul was this was Galatians is the first book the apostle wrote. 
And, and during that transition period from law to grace, circumcision was the big issue. But let me talk to you about water baptism. In our day, in present day 2006, water baptism is the big issue. Do you need to be water baptized in order to be saved? Well, Paul says, no. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 5. Let's go there. Ephesians chapter 4. Go with me to Ephesians chapter 4 and look at verse 5. You know, this is a big issue in our day. In Paul's day, it was circumcision. And he proved you don't have to be circumcised to be saved. But in our day, it's water baptism. And Paul proved you didn't have to be water baptized. In uh, Ephesians chapter 4, and look at verse 4. There is one body, speaking of the one body of Christ, and one spirit, that's the Holy Spirit, even as ye are called in one hope of your calling. The hope of the body of Christ is not to live on planet earth like the nation of Israel. The, the one hope of our calling are the heavenly places. The body of Christ was formed by God, and we'll go out there as a whole at, at the rapture, to rule and reign in his heavenly kingdom. Genesis 1, verse 1, in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. God created Israel, and the hope of their calling was to rule and reign on earth, and one day they shall through the Lord Jesus Christ. One day Jesus Christ will return to the nation of Israel. He will rule and reign over Israel in Jerusalem, Israel. I don't care what's going on over there today. The Bible says the creator God, Jesus Christ, will come back to Jerusalem, Israel, rule and reign as king over all the earth with believing remnant of Israel under him and the nations under them. But we'll already be as a body of Christ, those who trust Christ and his, what, his, what he did for us on the cross, his shed blood, we'll be in the heavenly places with him, ruling and reigning up there. Well, that's what the scripture says. There's one hope of our calling. Look at Ephesians 4 verse 5. One Lord, just the Lord Jesus Christ. One faith, that's the body of doctrine committed to Paul. When he says one faith, that's the information, the doctrine. Doctrine is the compartmentalized teaching. The teaching, the faith for today is Romans through Philemon. That's the one faith. Now watch this, one baptism. Now my friend, I, I've been dealing with people about bap water baptism for years. And inevitably, you ask someone, what is the one baptism of the body of Christ of Ephesians 4 or 5? And they automatically, 99% of the time, say water. But the Apostle Paul, he didn't say it was water. Go with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. And look at verse 17. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, look at verse 17. Paul says, for Christ sent me not to baptize. See, even the great apostle Paul wasn't in a position from God today to do any water baptism. That takes man out of it. But, but, look at verse 17, but to preach the gospel. See, Paul says, if I yet preach circumcision, or I'd say it today, if I yet preach water baptism for salvation, guess what happened? Verse 17, not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of non-effect. You know, my friend, when you tell people that they need to be water baptized in order to be saved, you take the power of the cross of Christ and make it non-effect. You know, there's preaching in the cross of Christ. There's power to save a, a man who believes that Christ died on the cross to pay for their sins. And when you add water baptism to that, you make it of non-effect. You take the power of way. You add works to grace. No. Look, verse 18, 1 Corinthians 1, 18, for the preaching of the cross, not the preaching of water baptism, not the preaching of circumcision. Paul says, if I yet preach circumcision, no, 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 my friend. The cross of Christ. You know, I stand here, I preach the cross of Christ. I preach that the Son of God died on the cross to pay for your sins. Something that a water baptism ceremony, a physical ceremony, won't ever change. You can't get, by the way, what's the big issue with water baptism? Well, according to God's prophetic program with the nation of Israel and the future and in time past, 
They were created by God to be a kingdom of priests and a holy nation in the earth. And according to the Mosaic law, the priests, the sons of Aaron, had to be water baptized and, and, and uh, anointed with oil. 